Are you ready? I'm tired of living in the darkness, man. It's all I've ever known. All that's ever known me besides her. You ever think about suicide? Hmm? I mean, really thought about it. Like there might be no other way out. It's a dark place to exist. And I've lived with the burden of that for far too long, longer than I can remember, and it's suffocating me. No fire, no inferno could top that. In fact, I'd invite God to the challenge. <laughs> God. <laughs> Where did you find him and all of them? Hello and welcome to the newly rebranded Sean Kelly Interviews podcast presented by Sean Kelly on Movies. Uh, today I am going to play an interview I did with uh, Corey Asraf and John Swab, uh, who directed the film Let Me Make You a Martyr, which is now uh, streaming exclusively on the uh, horror streaming service uh, Shudder. I did this interview after the world premiere of the film at the 2016 Fantasia Film Festival, and it was an interesting uh, talk about the film. As always, I should warn that this interview will contain spoilers for the film. I will see you afterwards. How did the um, idea for um, Let Me Make You a Martyr come out? Um, It's... uh Loosely based on real people, mm-hmm. personal experiences, mm-hmm. um, personal experiences of uh, abuse and addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, so those kind of events happened, and uh, you start trying to find a way to deal with them. So you start writing. Mm-hmm. That's where it kind of started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what was the development process for the film? Well, John and I had met. Seven years ago, he had the first draft of the script, which was amazing, and it was poetic, and, um, you know, we both, I mean, I fell in love with it immediately, and from then on, it was just tunnel vision, we just wanted to figure out how to make the film and get it, you know, get it fully realized, and, you know, there were many drafts written between then and now, um, but we had shot many projects that were, uh, we shot many projects to prepare for this mm-hmm. film. We shot many short films, music videos, mm-hmm. um, anything we could do to to really develop the uh, the aesthetic uh, for the for the feature. So, a lot of practice. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how did Marilyn Manson get involved? Through Mark Boone Jr. Mm-hmm. Two days before the shoot, uh, we didn't have a character. We didn't have an actor casted for that character. Mm-hmm. Um, so we took it to Mark and said, "Do you know anybody?" Can you think of anybody? He said, "I can. I can try Manson." Mm-hmm. And Manson called and, and showed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know he has like a producer role on the film. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think we're still working that out. Hmm. He's actually a producer. So um, moving on to the film, um, what you what are what would you say is like the backstory of the characters and like Drew Glass's relationship with his family before the events of the film? Um, before the events of the film, I uh, I know, but I don't know how important that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it's important to say. I think uh, he's a product of abuse. Mm-hmm. I think he's uh, a product of addiction, and recently put that down, but beyond that, I don't know how much more we want to say about that. What could you specifically say about Drew's relationship with June? Hmm. Um, they're uh, adopted brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. 
as Drew stated in the film, June came from uh, <laughs> June came from uh, another country when she's a child. Mm-hmm. She was raised by Drew's father, um, <laughs> and uh, I think they they fell in love. Vendor is like the kind of a relationship June develops with the um, kidnapped girl Ro- Rooney. So, um, wh- why do you think like June is like reluctant to just return Rooney to her family? <laughs> Um, because her family's dead. Like, as she says when she's with Drew, she says, uh, her parents owed, and he did away with them. Mm -hmm. So, she doesn't have anywhere to take this girl. And Mm -hmm. also, they're looking for this girl, the authorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, there's nowhere to really go with her. Mm -hmm. Hey, I kind of missed that. Like, I saw, like, like the the news broadcast, but I... Didn't put the pieces together. Got the yeah, we didn't want to really like like one thing we really wanted to do was leave a lot of breadcrumbs for people mm-hmm. to piece things together. Yeah, and we didn't want to put anything on the nose or be overtly, mm-hmm. you know. What was your What was your overall opinion of the film? What did you think? I thought it was okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, like I, I personally thought that um, well, that's actually the biggest question. So, what would you say are like the kind of motivations of Pope in the film? <laughs> kind of like I thought he was kind of like. Um, nihilistic. N- nihilistic. No. What was your? What were you gonna say? Oh, like, uh, like I, I, I kind of like compared him to like um, Javier Bardem's character in No Country for Old Men, kind of. I mean, I mean that's a cool comparison. I don't. Um, I guess probably similar elements of that character, but I think he kind of represents like uh, the force of nature mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Um, so. It, it, he was more there to uh, to have something like I think as these characters make choices and bad choices, mm-hmm. that opens up a door for something they're going to have to repent for, and that that's what that character represents. Well, did you did you always intend for the film to be framed by the interrogation? Mm-hmm. That actually came on in like the last second to last draft of the script because mm-hmm. it was structured differently and just from you know. A practical standpoint, just it, it would have been it would have been um, really challenging to shoot it the way it was written. Um, so we decided to restructure the film and b- build it around the interrogation, uh, which was really great because it's so dense and heavy, and there's so much dialogue. We wanted to give people a break and kind of take them out of this underworld, you know. Uh, so it really helped us in the editing room, and I'm, gl- I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Okay, so what was up? How did you decide to open the scene where it starts? Because it kind of gives away the whole thing without well, giving it I away. I mean, that's <laughs> the bookend opening, right? Yeah, that's yeah. like, uh, that's just kind of like a classic thing people do. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, um, you know, we made that choice because we, we really wanted, to, our style is to just throw people in. Mm-hmm. And it always has been, it always has been. Just throw people in, mm-hmm. hook them early, you know. So... That was one of the strongest. It, it was one. It was it, that, that had been in the script originally mm-hmm. uh, from the beginning. It was one of the strongest scenes, one of the best scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was. It, it was. It was written in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it was. It was. It was just. We just thought that it would really hook people, and mm-hmm. we get give people a, an opportunity to to uh, to, to meet Pope, mm-hmm. you know, and to uh, and to meet Brown, which was an interesting character. So mm-hmm. we just thought it was. You know. Okay. Uh, so what's uh, next for you? Uh, we're both working on a few different things. I mean, it really depends on what we, what we get the opportunity to make. Mm-hmm. Um, John's working on a few things. I'm working on a few things. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, well, that's it. <laughs> hey, thank okay. you. And that was my interview for Let Me Make You a Martyr, which I will once again say is streaming on the horror streaming service Shudder, which I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, my next interview will actually be in a few weeks' time, and it'll be my um, interview for um, 7852, which um, I actually had a, have is currently as a exclusive on uh, Patreon. So if you um, become a patron of uh, Patreon, you can uh, listen to the interview now before I re- release it officially uh, to coincide with the film's release on October 13th. Uh, That's all for today, and this is Sean Kelly signing off.